Tech Team Weekly. This show may contain mature language and themes. This episode discusses eating disorders. All right, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Tech Team Weekly. It is so amazing to see you all. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Gwen Diagram, and with me, I've got Sanj. Hello, Gwen. Hello, everyone. Hiya. So Sanj is our engineer, and I'm the manager, and we also have our tester, Neil. Hiya, Neil. That is me. Hi, Gwen. How are you doing? Uh, I'm really good. Yeah, cheers. Um, so uh, this week we have a pretty hairy episode. So, I mean, Facebook. Facebook has just been insane this week. So we're going to be talking about Facebook with Instagram and WhatsApp on top of that. And then if we have time, which we're suspicious about, but we might have time, we'll get onto the AI investment plan for the UK and a member of a of the Tory party's view on Pelotons. So yeah, we'll get onto those hopefully and we'll see. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you so much for joining. Amazing to have you all here. Yeah, I, I have a funny feeling uh, Neil's going to try and sneak in the little Peloton story somewhere. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll find a way to put. I'll find a way to relate it to Facebook if it looks like we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the stand up. My job stuff is still happening. Nothing more to report. Uh, when there is, uh, you'll be the first to know. I think it's just taking a lot longer than usual. They've got a new HR company, new processes. My background checks are just taking ages. Um, I've been playing a lot of uh, this, that new game I was telling you about, uh, New World. Um, it's it's very cool. It's kind of like I don't know if you've played Terraria, which is like that two D kind of Minecrafty kind of game. It's kind of like a three D beautiful version of Terraria, but it's it's very grindy. It's very much like the old school sort of RuneScape. Um, it's very grindy, so it's it's all very much like having a job. So it's my training basically right now for getting back into my job. Um, I still can't get any fuel. I'd love to with with all this spare time. I'd love to go drive out to Country Park or something, but. Still can't get any fuel where I'm in North London. London rocks, awesome. Um, I met up with, uh, well, I would know, uh, I caught up with uh, an old um, uh, mate of mine from uh, Compare the Market, Dowie, who was an engineering manager, but I think he was after your time, um, Neil, yeah. perhaps. But yeah, he's an awesome guy. Uh, I love him. And he said, that please don't say anything about him. And he's really shy and please don't mention him. So yeah, Dowie, really, really great catching up with you. Yeah, hope you hope you appreciate cool. the shout out. Yeah. And then just, just put a photo in about here. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Great, great suggestion. <laughs> All right, over to you, Neil. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, Sanj, if you want fuel, you should come up north. Uh, we, we've got loads of it, but I guess you can't get here. That's half the <laughs> challenge. It's, 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 it's like driving an electric car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, t in terms of my week, uh, I have been suffering with illness again. Uh, I was off work the last couple of days of last week. Um, you can probably still hear it in my voice. Uh, Feeling a little bit better now. I was uh, showing off my horrible bloodshot eye that I had uh, before we, before we started. I shan't do that now. It doesn't look good in HD. Um, but in amongst the downtime that's been caused by that, I've got a few things done. Um, I've managed to complete the slides for my test dot bash conference talk, which is in a couple of weeks' time. I know I should be resting, but it, it's not going to get done otherwise. So um, uh, all of the talks are pre-recorded, so I, I now need to, to find time when I actually have a voice to to go back and actually record a voiceover to those slides. But all's looking good. Uh, I decided I was going to up upgrade my PC to Windows 11. I was on the fence last week, but this week I discovered that Microsoft will decide who gets to upgrade and when. Uh, and basically, I'm not allowed to upgrade yet because um, I think they're doing lots of very sort of safe systems first, whereas my machine is very new. The primary hard drive is an SSD. It's a touch screen. I think I'm probably near the back of the queue for who's going to get it and when. So just waited to see when I'm allowed. Um, I've been binge watching lots of series that I've heard other people talking about. So I'm now up to date on what's going on with Squid Game and also with Ted Lasso. So, uh, both of which are award-winning or highly recommended shows. Um, also, the BBC's Vigil, um, their submarine drama. I've, I've been to all of those in the past uh, week. Um, and I've got a busy weekend uh, coming up the week, the week after this episode comes out. Um, I am finally going to see something in the big wide world. I'm going to a podcast recording. Um, the podcast No Such Thing as a Fish, which is a spin-off of QI. Uh, they're on tour at the moment. Uh, I'm going to be seeing them in Peterborough on Friday night. Looking forward to that. Uh, and seeing some friends and family down there while I'm there. Uh, on Saturday, I'm taking part in a 24-hour writing contest. I've done a few of these uh, micro-fiction contests before. This is where they give you like a fixed word limit. In this case, it's 250 words. On the day, they will tell you, you've got to write about this topic. You've got to sneak this word into it somewhere and like an action or an activity that has to happen somewhere in the story. Um, so it's like fun uh, to write against the clock with a particular set of prompts. Looking forward to that. 
and then on Sunday, if I'm health, healthy um, for charity, I'm going to be biking 100 kilometers on my Peloton uh, if the Tory Bloody government yeah. allows it. There you go. He's sneaking in. <laughs> You really need to learn how to rest, Neil. Doing yeah. slides is not resting. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm going to, um, uh, this week I'll mostly be going to bed much earlier. Good, good. Squid, Squid Game sounds awesome. I've never heard of this. Just the name alone oh, makes me want to watch it. It looks so, so good. But uh, it's only it? on Netflix, isn't it? It's a Korean, oh, well, I mean, I should let Neil tell you because he's watched <laughs> it. I'm just very excited about it. But I don't have yeah. Netflix. I, I don't have any streaming no. stuff. It is only Netflix. It's one of their breakout international hits. There is there is a, a dubbed version uh, if, if you don't like watching subtitles, but I'm, I'm a subtitled person. Uh, it, the easiest, very simple way to sum it up is it's, it's a bit like sort of the Hunger Games slash... Um, the, the thing it's most like is if you've played the game Fall Guys, it's like a, a TV series drama mm-hmm, based on mm-hmm. Fall Guys, basically. Like It's like lots of people who get eliminated okay. and whittled down to one and there's a cash prize, uh, but it's like a uh, game of death. Uh, it's... It's fun. Um, I, I don't think it's as, as amazing as everyone says. Um, it's a bit hokey in places, uh, but it's, it's good fun. All right. I'm sold. I'll check it out. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So uh, I've had an interesting week at work. So uh, we had the product council um, and uh, the priorities of what we are working on has just absolutely massively changed. Um, so I was meant to be starting Scrum with a squad next week, but we've had to push it forward. Uh, So we've had quite a bit of argument at work whether I would be pushing it forward or back. I believe that time only goes forward, so you have to push things forward. (laughs) You can't push things back because, I mean, time doesn't go backwards. Um, But, yeah, I am sticking to we are pushing it forward. But, yeah, need to push it forward two weeks to sort out priorities with everything. It's quite an adventure. Um, I had, like, so... The Google Calendar has a new thing which tells you how many meetings you're in, like how many hours of meetings you're in. So I'm in like 26 hours of meetings at the moment, um, which is just absolutely madness. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm getting used to just living in meetings all the time, basically. Um, So, yeah, uh, next week it's just like sorting stuff out around that. It's going to be fun. Um, Personal wise, I had a really mint week. So I went and saw a friend on Monday night, which I haven't been able to do before because I haven't been able to drive to her house. Um, And so, yeah, usually she visits me. That was amazing. And then I went to a friend's birthday party at another friend's house on Thursday with like six people. And it was like old art music people, which was just like amazing. So really enjoyed that. Um, I'm really thankful for being able to actually drive and see people now. Um, I haven't had to fill up yet, but I'm going to a bird sanctuary tomorrow, so I might have to fill up then. But yeah, looking forward to looking at birds, uh, and that's pretty much my week. Awesome! Sounds like you've had a great week. Yeah, it's um, it's just been so nice to see people, like because I'm still very scared of mm. COVID, but the people I was seeing were mm. also really nervous. Well, not on Monday, the Thursday people were, so it was okay to hang out in a group. I thought, yeah. social engineering all right in social engineering this week kev says another great episode your bit about loot boxes also resonated with me these surprise mechanics prey not only on kids and people with gambling addictions but also on sufferers from mental health conditions such as adhd bipolar fomo etc fomo for sure uh, jim sterling did a great video about this microtransactions are an accessibility issue uh, it's a good one to check out Kristen says uh, Operation Ironside was amazing. That this was this police thing we talked about with that uh, with that the secret phone. If you remember, I found out about this a couple of months ago. It's a brilliant sting by the police. It's not entrapment if they say it themselves and the devices are just monitored. Okay, well, I guess that's that's the answer about the entrapment issue. Uh, thank you to Matt Sagar for sharing our stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, Miss you. Hope you're well. Uh, Lee Hawkins says, thanks for another fun and interesting podcast episode. The weekly cadence and consistent format of this podcast make it a must listen at the start of each week now for me. Awesome, Lee. This is what we want. We've got him hooked. We've got him in our claws now. (laughs) He can't escape. Um, Tristan from Provar Testing says uh, they've got two open roles on their team. Quality architect evangelist and community specialist. Sounds they sound like pretty cool, fun roles uh, if you're in the mm-hmm. space. And and I know you two, I think both of you or one of you know Tristan? Yeah, I spoke to Tristan, uh, I think, it, oh, the week before last. Yeah, Tristan's amazing. Working with Tristan would be, he's such an awesome human. 
And right. I, I certainly know of Provar as an organization. Uh, certainly uh, the other podcast for testers that I do, Testers Island Discs, they are regular sponsors uh, of our podcast. I'm very used to reading out their name at the start. Uh, yeah, good, good company who are out there. On LinkedIn, Rod Hulse, Rod Hulse said, uh, mymotorhub.com is looking for our first two software engineers to start designing and building our systems. The architecture and tech stack is yet to be defined, so a great opportunity to help shape the future. This is awesome. I didn't even see this one. Someone snuck this in. I assume it was you, Neil. Uh, yeah, I sniped it the last second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great job. That's exciting. Like, That's yeah, being able to define the tech stack and architecture mm. is like proper dreamy, isn't it? So, yeah, check mm. that out. I'm excited about that. I can't wait to hear more about what they get up to. And if I'm not mistaken, my motorhub, this, um, the CEO the, or the director there, this is a Johan from uh, Compare the Market, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 He's an awesome guy. I bloody love Johan. Um, this, this would be a great opportunity. <laughs> I think a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned uh, Louise uh, and the crew from Dead Happy, uh, who are friends of ours, friends of the show. They went over to the, some spooky film festival it, up, up, up where they are somewhere. In York, and we yeah. haven't heard from them since, since so who knows? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it was too spooky. <laughs> Moving on to building in public. Yeah, uh, I, I will keep this brief because it, it's very straightforward. Um, on Twitter and LinkedIn, we're continuing to see uh, marginal growth in followers. Um, it's They're both in the sort of the 170s. Um, it would be nice to see it going up more, but it's not going down. That's always a benefit. It means people are sticking with us. Um, it's actually kind of flat. A few of our graphs are kind of flatlining in places, which is good in a way because it mm -hmm. means we can now start doing experiments and see what the actual result is. If we think we've sort of plateauing, then actually, you know, if we were to stick 50 or 100 pounds into an, a sponsored post. Um, we can actually see whether that has any direct effect. So I will probably look to do that sometime mm -hmm. this week. The only pain is that both Twitter and LinkedIn need you to upload a credit card and have keep it on file, um, which means that, you know, if one of you guys accidentally drunk sponsors a post for a grand, <laughs> that comes out of my bag. So um, <laughs> you have to, have to practice responsible uh, advertising, I think, if, if we go ahead with that, <laughs> uh, that look this week. Um, in terms of video views on YouTube, that again continues to increase steadily. It's keeping at kind of the same rate, which again is good. It means we've not got much of a drop off in listeners. Um, interesting though, the, the podcast feeds, the ones that come through Anchor, um, which can serve out to uh, Pocket Cast and uh, Apple Podcast and Spotify and all that, uh, continuing to accelerate and has done for the past few weeks. I think in part helped by the fact that when we post episodes now, we post to our website, which has links to all the places uh, rather than just embedding the YouTube video. So people uh, have more choice, which is good. And we have one new sponsor on Patreon this week. Uh, thank you very much to the tester Lee Rathbone. He becomes our fifth yeah, yeah. active subscriber, um, which is fantastic. Keeping us on track for uh, that extra content when we get to 10. I actually made a post for the patrons this week because it's been uh, inactive i wanted to let them personally know that um their input is appreciated we're doing a i'm sharing a little bit of extra uh, financial information in those patron posts to say you know what your money is going towards so uh if you'd like to help out and find out more please come on board yeah excellent Cheers, lee. thanks lee <laughs> This week's epic. This week's epic is bloody massive because we're talking about Facebook and it's pretty spicy. So it's a couple of like epic stories all in one, but all focused on Facebook. So we've got the six hour outage on October the 4th, which Facebook has put out a blog post, um, which was caused by a configura issue, configuration issues, which broke DNS. Um, so I've heard other people talk about this and it's not very, um, people that aren't in tech can't really understand it. They just say it's a lot of words that they don't really understand. So how helpful that is, I'm not really sure. Um, but interestingly, this took down not only Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, but also Facebook headquarters, which meant that Facebook workers were having to break into their offices, allegedly. There was also an outage on October the 8th which lasted for two hours, which blocked access to its apps and services for some users. I haven't seen the full details of the reason for the second outage as of yet. Um, but yeah, so lots of craziness around like keeping the services up at the moment. Um, so among all of this, a whistleblower, Francis Hogan, Hagen, who was a former Facebook employee who worked on the company's unit, Monitoring electoral interference has claimed that Facebook harms children and is destabilizing democracies. Some of the claims around harming children include leading teenagers towards anorexia-related content where 
Um, Haugen added that women would be walking around with brittle bones in 60 years' time because of the anorexia-related content they found on Facebook platforms. Facebook recently put their plans for Instagram Kids, an Instagram experience for under-13s, on pause. Um, According to research, 32% of teenage girls asked in 2020 felt worse about their bodies when using Instagram, so that may have added to the reason why they put it on pause. Um, Just lots of spicy content in there, um, pretty hardcore. On top of this, Haugen also warned that Facebook was literally fanning ethnic violence in places such as Ethiopia because it was not policing its service adequately outside of the US. Inside of the US, the company had to break the glass and turn safety settings back on after the storming of the Capitol on the 6th of January. And as well of like, as all of that, there's also a rumour of Facebook ending their work from home forever rule mm-hmm. after the outage on October 4th. So there's just so much going on in regards to Mm. Facebook at the moment. Um, Do you both have Facebook? Uh, Sanj, do you have Facebook still? No, ma'am. I never had Facebook. I never used it, actually. Wow. Uh, I wasn't a big fan, but I do use WhatsApp. So that that affected me. Mm -hmm. How about you, Neil? I have a Facebook account, um, which I created relatively recently, like within the last three or four years. I, I had I had to remove myself from it. And then I found there were a load of social groups who arrange meetups, um, I get local get togethers on Facebook. So I needed an account to take part in those. Uh, and then after our son was born and there was a lockdown happening, it was a really useful place to create like private galleries where we can share photos of what's going on with mm-hmm. the little one. Um, so for that reason, it's useful. Uh, but again, similarly, a big user of WhatsApp, particularly in our house, where um, particularly around when we were trying to put our son to sleep and my wife trying to get him to bed and I'm downstairs making dinner and we're trying to synchronize. We're, we're doing, sending lots of messages on WhatsApp to you know work out what's going on uh, so that was quite quite the interruption uh, on on october the 4th was uh you know we luckily we mm. resorted to sms but um it seemed like a very backwards time for a few hours there was it earlier this year a lot of people moved over to signal or telegram um mm. were mm. either of you not tempted by that I'm at the point where I cannot learn any more apps. <laughs> like maybe, <laughs> who knows? But uh, I, I don't. Honestly, I, I'm someone who likes to heavily evaluate and understand why I'm switching to a particular thing, and I, and I don't have the time to work out Signal or Telegram, which is mm. best, who runs it, um, how secure is it, and um, mm. to be honest, right, right now I'm not doing anything to, to any extent where. Um, certainly, I'm not exchanging anything that's particularly secure or, or anything like that. I'm like. As long as I can get the message through is the main thing, mm-hmm. which we couldn't on Tuesday. I so yeah, I use I use Signal as well, but I have like mm-hmm. only because literally like I think three or four of my good friends like just were like, no, we're not using WhatsApp anymore. We're on Signal. So now to communicate with them, I have to be on Signal. You know, mm-hmm. um, which I think is fine. I think around that time, I was like, yeah, okay. If the whole world moves from WhatsApp to Signal, sure, maybe it makes sense. But really, hardly anyone moved. Yeah. That's interesting. I moved over to Signal and I moved, um, I, yeah, moved some of my friends over to Signal. Um, but yeah, so I deleted Facebook quite a few, quite a few years ago now. And, uh, the music scene where people put gigs on is on Facebook. It used to be on, so it used to be on message boards where people would advertise gigs. Like there was a big one, Cops and Robbers in Leeds that, um, we used to advertise gigs on, then it moved over to Facebook, cops and rubbers died. Um, and yeah, can't find out about gigs anymore, um, which you just have to accept, but I lost a lot of my social life moving off Facebook, but yeah, it's, it's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. On a tangent, I'm very close to putting the plug on Twitter. Like a lot of good stuff happens on there, but there's so much negative stuff. Like I, I find that maybe... 80% of my interactions are blocking users that I don't even know just because their comments are annoying me and I don't want to ever see them again. And, and that's not a, that's not a positive experience to spend really? uh, anywhere. Um, I, I may well just disconnect them rather than delete the accounts. But um, yeah. yeah, this is the problem with all, the, all these networks where certainly Facebook and also YouTube, they're primed to encourage engagement and they don't really care what the nature of the engagement is. Like on YouTube, if you thumbs down a video, that counts as an engagement. And, you know, that, that's interaction mm-hmm. with the video. That, that means people will continue creating content like that because it's drawing people to it. Um, and we, we've so nearly talked about in depth about Facebook mm-hmm. in previous episodes mm-hmm. when we've talked about the concept of, of things like fake news. Um, it, it feels like it's all coming to a head now. 
I mean, there, you know, there've been countless studies about, you know, the ill effects that Facebook's having, you know, not least on like our democracies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is, I mean, there's so much to unpack this week, right? Because so much has gone on. Firstly, like we're so reliant as a society on a lot of the tech that they, they, they control, right? Because it's like, like you said, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, like, you know, half a dozen others, right? And effectively, a, a lot of the world's communication methods just kind of died, right? When this one company made like a, a bit of a, a boo-boo or, or something allegedly, right? <laughs> like, is that, is that, is that, is this a good position to be in? Like, do we need to like... I mean, I know they've been talking about regulating big tech companies, especially companies mm -hmm. like Facebook. Do they need to start thinking about things like this as well? It's a terrifying monopoly. Like, so I did read some uh, comments in articles that it was a safety issue because some of the people, some people absolutely rely on these messaging services. Like, especially, I think it was saying, especially in like kind of some of the countries where, because what, do you remember when Facebook was talking about how they were going to give internet to um, some of the more third world countries, but that meant that yeah. they were going to own the internet there? That was quite a few years ago. I can't yeah, remember yeah. what ended up happening with that. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of completely controlling countries and their communication. It's quite terrifying. Mm. Another, uh, I don't want to derail this too, too early, but speaking about kids, right? I know a lot of kids and all the kids that I know like from like, you know, toddler up to like teenage kind of years, they all hate Facebook. None of them use Facebook. Mm -hmm. They think Facebook is for sad old people, you know? Yeah. So, um, so they are losing a lot of content, uh, like a lot of, um, the younger people. So, and if they don't get them signed up now, they won't get them signed up ever. Um, so kids used to use Snapchat quite a bit. Snapchat's died now. Um, like, and then, yeah, they moved over, like, most of it's TikTok now um, mm, and stuff like mm. that. But, I mean, why why would you be incentivized to use Facebook or, like, when, I don't know, it doesn't make you feel good. So the comment mm. saying, like, 32% of teenage girls asked in 2020 for worse about their bodies when using Instagram. Um, I don't know. Why use something that makes you feel like shit? Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah. I mean, I, it's addictive, right? All their peers are on it, right? All the cool content mm -hmm. is there. They can just, you know, they just mindlessly, I mean, not just them, me too. And I guess all of us, you know, we just mindlessly scroll through whatever our social media site is of, pre of preference, right? You know, and they just have this, you know, awful harmful content that's directed to them, right? Uh, I've always been too scared to use Instagram. So um, I would, so because I get into like health stuff sometimes, I was really into spinning and stuff like that. So I probably would have looked up stuff like that. Um, the effect that it would have had on me looking at like people way fitter than me and being like, why can't I be as fit mm -hmm. as that? I'm just like, mm -hmm. I can't use Instagram. That's going to, that's going to fuck me up basically. Um, and so, yeah, like, because so much of it is, oh my God, so much of it is like, uh, what is it when they min photo manipulation? Uh, Photoshop. So oh, much yeah. of it is Photoshop, photoshopped. Yeah. And there's so yeah. many like things around like Photoshop versus reality, which is really good to have a look at, but like you can't realize it's Photoshop. So no wonder people feel like shit when it's like, why can't I look like that? No one fucking looks like that. No, um, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me interject just before we let Neil yeah. actually say something. So now the... <laughs> Sorry, Neil, almost risked you having an opinion. <laughs> no, but now it's not just Photoshop. It's like on videos, the video filters are amazing as well, right? You just can't yeah. tell. You're like, oh my so, God. So you know what? Fucking TikTok. Um, like everyone's skin looks amazing on TikTok and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because there's filters on TikTok. Like when you upload it. So if you have uh, lower res videos, skin looks better as well. Um, and so, yeah, like it's just constant. And TikTok, you have to actively go in and turn it off to be able to ha like, which, which a lot of people don't. Normal. And so they get accused of having filters. I have a lot of feelings on this. Sorry, Neil, I will let you speak because I will just go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. All, all I was going to say was uh, the as as young people and children get get shunned from networks that we recognize and they start finding out other ones 
the challenge then becomes moderating the content that they are looking at, which as a, as a parent is something that, that you may want to do uh, to understand what they are seeing um, as they move mm. into darker corners of the internet that you may prefer them not to. Um, that's the scary thing. There was a time where Facebook was something of a safe space and a, a space that was known and was kind of used by everybody. Uh, it has, has come a long way now. It, it feels like a long time since we had the last big social network shakeup. I remember um, when me and my friends moved from MySpace to Facebook, like I remember being one of the first to go to Facebook, uh, being annoyed at things that you couldn't do compared to, to MySpace, uh, but being you know enthused by the way you could share content rather than just leaving messages on walls. Uh, it, it feels like that it, we must be due a, a big shakeup soon. Unless it's already happened, I haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So I think TikTok was a big shakeup. Um, yeah. like a lot of people using TikTok and you can see how different companies have added shorts on now. So like YouTube has their shorts feature, like, because everyone tries to copy other ones, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there was also Does... the part of Facebook ending their work from home forever rule after the outage oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. This um, was like, whoa, what a shocker, man. I mean. Yeah, I guess they, after this disaster, they were like, we need people on site, you know, available, right, to like physically fix things, right, or be in the office. And this is like, this is after they told people they can work for ho from home forever, right? And, you know, Neil, you were saying this on Slack, people have moved across the country, right? They've, they've yeah, bought they houses, can. they've started new lives, put their kids in new schools, right? Now what? What, they have to move back to San Francisco? It's, it's crazy. Um... I mean, I, I understand the, the need for some on-site presence, but that doesn't mean changing the meaning of the word forever. Um, it's 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 very strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've been getting a steady stream of all this, this research that's been coming out, you know, research that uh, shows uh, all the negative effects that we're talking about here, right? Research that has been squashed by face Facebook themselves that I think we spoke about this either last week or the week before, right? Um, and then there was this huge whistleblower uh, on 60 Minutes, like a few few days ago, that coincided very nicely with this massive out outage, right? And there's like this, you know, conspiracy theory, which I was I was prone to believe originally, and now I believe less, right? But uh, you know, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll air it, which is that you know, like they do in politics, they they try to you mm. know, divert attention from um, someone else's bad news with some bad news of their own, right? So now. Instead of talking about uh, this this uh, this Francis Hogan or Hogan, how you pronounce her name, um, everything that she's saying, she's she was you know this she was the whistleblower, and now everyone's talking about the Facebook outage instead. You know, is it a bit is it, is it a bit suspicious? Yeah, I so they definitely do this in politics, um, like and announce things close to Christmas, like really bad things. Mm. I can't remember what they announced last Christmas. I think it might have been that they were reducing, um, reducing funding funding for schools last Christmas that they announced like just close to Christmas. Maybe, yeah. But like, mm. yeah, I don't know if this is related to it. Probably, I mean, how much will the whistleblower stuff cost? Well, I mean, I don't know, because after the Cambridge Analytics thing, no one, like hardly anyone deleted Facebook. So I used to do a talk um, where I would ask in it, like, you know, it was about ethics, um, well, bits about ethics. And I would ask in the talk, like, who deleted Facebook after the Cambridge Analytics scandal? And like, you know, in an audience of like 400 people, maybe one or two people would put their hands up. No one deletes Facebook after all of this stuff. What do they have to lose, you know? Yeah, we see this all the time. There was um, just this week that the game Far Cry 6 was released by Ubisoft, um, which has been treated to the mm -hmm. very same, very usual review, review cycle. Some people like it. Some people think it's moderately all right. Nobody has remembered the fact that Ubisoft have been fighting off um, claims of, you know, the way they treat their employees for, for most of the past year. Um, it's just it's just not mm. on the table. People just want to talk mm. about the game. But you've got to think about the people who've made the game and the conditions under which they've made the game. And, you know, should we be supporting that? And it, it's yeah. weird that it's it's just been taken off the table of conversation. Um, I found that very, very uh, disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can we can throw Blizzard into the mix here as well. You know, I'm a huge fan of Blizzard's games, you know, but like, I mean, they've not been 
um, very well behaved over the last few years. You know, lots of things have been coming out, right? But mm -hmm. full circle, right? How much does it take? What has to happen for us to drop these platforms? You know, like how much has to how how much has to happen? What do you need to be told to delete Facebook or not play a Blizzard game anymore or not buy a Ubisoft game? Like what has to happen? I have no idea. I. I was so confused that people didn't delete it after Cambridge Analytics. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand. I think it comes back to very similar to what you said, Gwen, about your the music scene. I, I think it, it's all about having your community and where is your community. And if your community is still on Facebook, then mm -hmm. you're going to be reluctant to, to get off it. That, that's certainly been the thing that's keeping me there is, is there are things that I need to have an account for. Yeah, yeah, totally. And WhatsApp as well. So, um I used to I used to delete WhatsApp all the time and then I would go to a conference and my friends at the conference wanted to communicate over WhatsApp and I'm like, can can we not use Slack? Like I just want to use Slack for everything, but then you yeah. need to set up a Slack and then you've got another freaking Slack, don't you? Um and so yeah, like but finally they were like, Okay, no more WhatsApp, we're moving over to Signal. And I'm like, Thank fuck for that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think one other useful thing you could do to analyze the impact of this outage um, was a story that we shared internally. We didn't mention at the start was um, there was someone did an investigation to the number of pull requests that were raised during the downtime. And there was a massive spike. I think it was like 25 or 30% more pull requests were happening while Facebook was down. And now some people will say maybe that's because of uh, productivity improvements. Some people say that actually maybe people need to disable things like Facebook ad trackers because they're slowing their sites down when the, when the, the sites disappeared. But um there was a massive flurry of activity amongst the development community while Facebook was down. I think it was to try and get your stuff to build because, yeah, like if if it was blocking stuff, but then again, you need to sort out async while you're loading in uh, third party stuff. But like, yeah, if your CI was failing and stuff like that, it's just like get it out, rip it out. And those are quick PRs to make as well, aren't they? Like comment it out or whatever. So um, I only learned about like the extent of all the trackers and stuff like that because I've been working on, um, I was working on the website earlier this year for my company. Um, well, like this year and last, and I've like working really closely for marketing with that and asking to put in all these pixels. And like, there are so many pixels you can put in for tracking and getting a, and learning about how much they track you and all this kind of stuff was absolutely insane. Like, yeah. So that like TikTok had pixels, but because of last year with all the thing about TikTok um, around like, is your data safe with TikTok? Do you want to install this on your phone? All this kind of stuff like that. We were like, no to TikTok, but we've got Facebook and that tracks you fucking everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, And it's a situation that's not improving because we've got all these cool. like EU directives around cookies that, um, you know, sites have to display whether or not, you know, what cookies we're going to store. But we're all just used to loading up a site, clicking that, just to allow all, you know, no one reads the T's and C's anymore. So all we've done, we've made the user experience worse. And, you know, we're still just, just doing the same stuff. C cookie pop-ups, they, they're, they're like the bane of my existence sometimes, especially if you're on like, like if you're using Brave, you know, as, as your browser or you have like mm. ad blockers, they just constantly keep coming up, you know? Oh, that's awful. Because they also use a cookie yeah. to store whether they've asked you about the cool. cookies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, well, rounding up the Facebook thing, it's a mess. And I don't yeah. know what we're going to do to solve it. Like, there's a monopoly. Um, it's disappointing that the blog posts they put out, like, not everyone could understand it. Um, so, yeah, they could make their, like, why they went down a bit more accessible to people, I think, so that people wanting to know that aren't in tech could understand um, the whistleblowing stuff, the stuff around like teenagers and anorexia related content, which has been happening for years anyway on the internet. But yeah, that's, that's a fire. The fanning ethnic violence, um, like there was the Myanmar stuff as well. And Ethiopia, like Christ, it's a mess. And then yeah, ending their face work from home rule. I mean, mm. yeah. Well done, Facebook. You created a fucking mess this week. Well, yeah. At least next week can't be worse. <laughs> no, well, let's hope not. Um. News bites.
<laughs> are you you are honoring me by allowing us to reintroduce uh, news bites just for one segment just so i can get this uh, soapbox ramp off my chest yeah Absolutely. yeah yeah totally <laughs> we want to see you get right, pissed off yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <Here we go>. <laughs> 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 oh right you have to hold me back which is gonna be difficult when it's a 10 second lag so uh, i will stop when you tell me to stop <laughs> so there was some unlikely crossover news from the conservative party conference this week after party chairman oliver dowden stated that civil servants needed, needed to get off their pelotons and back to their desks it's part of the government's continued get back to work messaging, which is somewhat dismissive of how hard we've all been working during the pandemic and how many of us have had to adapt to maintain our health, fitness and well-being while being cooped up inside. Although the comments were a direct response to a Peloton loving senior civil servant, the soundbite is also remarkably tone deaf when it comes to civil service wages. With the median public sector salary currently sitting at just below £30,000, a Peloton would be classed as an unaffordable, if desirable, luxury for many. Uh, this, to me, is just another classic case of this government trying to combine public health messaging with economic policy, and the two do not work well together whenever they try and do it. it it's similar to when uh, they introduced Eat Out to Help Out, which was partially responsible for the second wave of COVID, when we were just like, just push people, just push people to bed together because we want PrEP to stay open and that sort of thing. And again, the, the whole... There's a very similar thing coming out of the second wave where the government was saying uh, it's up to you, the people, to support the high streets and get them back together. It's like, no, it's you, up to you, the government, to come to some understanding about, about land rent and, and making sure people could just survive. This is unprecedented. Don't just push us all into shops and make us um, try to feel all right. It, it, it's, again, without just going on a general COVID rant, it's very weird being out right now and just, uh, it seems where I am, masks are now the exception, um, despite, you know, uh, shops are putting up messages saying it'd be nice if you wore masks no one really is uh it's um yeah and obviously you you come at the peloton you come at me so um i think this particular senior civil servant <laughs> yeah. um, her, her message she specifically <laughs> said um the thing she liked about working from home was she could just grab five minutes when she's got some downtime to actually to, to get that fitness and exercise and, and feeling good about herself that was hard to do when she was in the office and she was spending time commuting it, it was very very basic messaging that was turned into a soundbite um, to support a particular government policy that is uh, worrying. Yeah. So, so I find it ironic uh, that the Tories are telling us to get off your bikes when in the 80s they told us to get on your bike, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> trying to get everyone to go to work. Um, and so, yeah, the juxtaposition with that is quite hilarious, I think. I think I think a great, a better sound bite would have been get off your Peloton and get on your bike to come into the office. Yeah, <laughs> totally. But you also need to support public transport. It, 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 it's, a, it's a weird time. I think the funny That's thing true. was going around social media, pe people were trying to establish whether this was a good or bad news story for Peloton. Like, does, is this bringing Peloton into the masses <laughs> or is it, is it criticizing them? Or I don't know. Okay, awesome. You got that out of your system now? You happy? You okay? It feels like a, a kilo or two off my chest, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, so happy. All right. Well, well, we better wrap this up here so Neil can get back onto his peloton. The wash up. Thank you all very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We had, we had a great time. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. Um, please do send us your feedback. Hit us up on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, or wherever the hell we are. I have no idea these not days. Not Facebook. Not, not Facebook. Definitely don't hit us up on Facebook. <laughs> uh, please subscribe and uh, see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Ciao. Have a good one. Bye. Tech Team Weekly.